Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. In a previous video, I was playing around with receiving signals from NOAA weather satellites, and I was using a very basic antenna that I made out of scraps. And this is uh, basically TV rabbit ears set up in just the right angle and just the right length to receive those satellite transmissions. Now this antenna works okay, but I've come across another design online called a quadrifiller helix. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. And it's basically this complicated egg beater situation. So it looks kind of complex, but a lot of people say it's actually pretty easy and you can build it out of almost anything. So as with most of my projects, I'm just gonna dig around the garage, find some garbage and try to construct this thing. Now this won't be a how-to video because I don't know how to do this yet. This is my first attempt at one of these QFH antennas, so I might screw it up. I will try to put some links in the description to other people's build projects and instructions on this. I found a lot of them really hard to understand. So again, I don't know if I'm going to do it right, but I will put my most useful resources in the description if you want to follow along. Now as usual, I'm using my vast collection of hoarded PVC. Every time I see a piece of PVC pipe in a dumpster or on the side of the road, I grab it. So some of these are filthy, uh, who knows what they're used for, but I'm just making an antenna. I'm not going to drink out of this, so I don't really care what it was used for in the past. All right, here is my QFH antenna, I think. If I've done everything correctly, uh, the satellite signal coming in is circularly polarized, so it will interface with these twisting wires, whereas horizontal or vertical polarization signals from ground-based sources won't be picked up quite as strongly by this. So it's supposed to eliminate some of that interference. So we've basically got two loops. We've got this black wire that loops around, goes through the bottom, comes up the other side, and we've got this white wire. The black wire is the long loop, the white wire is the short loop, and I'll put some uh, info in the description about what the measurements for those are. Up at the top, I've got just a regular antenna cable, and it's looped around four times, which somebody on the internet said to do as a way of um, matching uh, something or balancing something. It's been 20 years since I took my ham license test, so. I don't remember half the radio theory of how this stuff works, but I can duct tape stuff to other stuff, so there's that. Then, up the top, my antenna wire comes through. Um, part of it goes to the long loop and part of it goes to the short loop. And I'll throw the diagram to that in the link as well. Obviously, if I'm going to leave this outside long term, I'll do a little more waterproofing. Right now, I've just got things kind of hacked together to see if it works. Okay, I've got the antenna set up. Got my SDR listening, and we're just starting to pick up NOAA 19. I also finally have live decoding working in wx to image and my live decoding is getting a signal now. It's jumping a little bit there because I was moving the frequency center around to account for the Doppler shift. So here's the image that I just recorded using the QFH antenna. And this is an infrared image because it's nighttime, and that's the mode that the satellite's transmitting in. And here's a similar infrared image from a few days ago using that V dipole antenna. It looks really similar, but the image is larger, meaning that I got a little more usable data out of that pass. And these are both very similar passes where the satellite was going almost directly overhead. So I have to say, I'm not terribly impressed with this QFH antenna. Um, it really doesn't seem to work any better than the V dipole that I was using before. I don't know if that's uh, because I did it wrong or it's positioned wrong or what, but uh, I don't know. It just doesn't seem to be worth the effort to construct it. All right, so before I completely scrap this thing, I'm going to try a different antenna cable. Uh, the one I'm using, I'm not really sure where it came from. I'm not sure if it's rated correctly, and I'm not really sure of my soldering job up top. 
So I'm going to try to eliminate some of those problems with an all new cable uh, salvaged from this little antenna. So I'm going to rip out my wiring in there, put this one in, and try it again. Here's a closer look at my terrible soldering. So the shield of the coax cable goes to one end of each loop and the center of the coax goes to the other end of each loop. Uh, the white again is the short loop and the black is the long loop. All right, we're trying again during the day and the satellite should be about directly overhead at this point and our signal doesn't seem that much better than the V-dipole. Okay, so here is the image that I got with the QFH antenna with the new wire and that definitely looks a little better than before. Now compare it to this one that I got with the V dipole. This was actually the first image that I ever got off of this thing. And I'm going to say these are pretty similar in quality and amount of north-south coverage. So I still think that QFH antenna, which is this one over here, is really no better than the V dipole, which is this one. So I think both these antennas perform about the same with the setup that I've got in the location that I've got. So I might come back to this when I have a linear amplifier and uh, do another comparison to see what happens. But for now, that's all I've got for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.